What would happen if all the planets in the solar system were turned into stars? In this video, I'll run an experiment in the Universe Sandbox Simulator and show you what chaos will erupt in the solar system. We have two different simulations ahead of us, let's see how it all ends. And in the first simulation, I turned all the main planets, including the dwarf planet Pluto, into stars. And now you can see this situation in the solar system. The simulation is currently paused. But before I start it, I'll show you what kind of stars we ended up with. Mercury, you see it as it normally is now, but I just want to show you how to turn it into a star. I decided to make it a red dwarf and just set the minimum mass for a red dwarf, which is 0.08 solar masses. And so it became like this, it started to grow. I've sped up time a lot and I'm starting the simulation. And watch as Mercury turns into a star, a full-fledged red dwarf. Its temperature is already 2700 degrees and it's still rising. And in the end, Mercury's temperature is 2860 degrees Celsius. Now you can see Venus. I'll set the view settings to informative mode so it's not so hard on the eyes and we can get a better look at the surface. So this is Venus, the second planet from the Sun. Its mass is 0.25 solar masses. Now you see Earth, our home planet, its mass is 0.3 solar masses. And Mars, often called the red planet, its mass is 0.15 solar masses. Here you can see the habitable zone of these stars, it's much smaller than the suns. But I simply made the inner planets of the solar system into red dwarfs. Here is the star Jupiter. Jupiter's mass is approximately 1.2 solar masses. In comparison, here is Saturn, and its mass is 0.9 solar masses. And here you can see the habitable zone of Jupiter and the habitable zone of Saturn. I made Saturn and Jupiter into yellow dwarfs, the same as the Sun. And Uranus looks like this, its mass is 0.6 solar masses. And Neptune's mass is 0.65 solar masses. If you look at the habitable zones of Uranus and Neptune, they are much smaller than even those of Saturn, Jupiter and the Sun itself. Jupiter has the largest habitable zone here. I made Uranus and Neptune into orange dwarfs. And now for Pluto, I'll show you how I turned it into a star. I want to make Pluto a brown dwarf. To do this, I'll set its mass to 55 Jupiter masses. Oh, right away we have a gas giant. But it's a gas giant that's starting to heat up. And look how it ignited. Its temperature is already over 700 degrees, and in the end, the temperature settled at 727 degrees Celsius. Time to start the simulation. But here in the simulation settings, I'll turn on pause on collisions, so we don't miss any collisions that might happen. It'll be interesting. Let's see if these stars will collide. Alright, starting the simulation, let's see how everything behaves. For now, it seems like everything is moving. But no, the stability is being disrupted. Mars and Earth made a close orbit here. Venus is approaching Mercury. And uh, stop. Did you see that? We have a pause. And here it turns out Mercury flew so close to Venus that it started to, what, tear Venus apart. Wow. I'll show you all this in more detail. Starting the simulation. Did Mercury turn into a gas giant? Wow, no way. And what is this? It says fragment? Is this not even Venus? If I speed up time even more, what will happen to this fragment? It's cooling down. Basically, a huge chunk of rock will be left with a size of almost four Earths. Incredible. Yes, wow. And Mercury really suffered. It's a gas giant and the temperature is 558 degrees. And yes, it lost a lot of mass. Only 44 Jupiter masses are left, so it will just become a brown dwarf. Let's keep watching. Maybe we'll find something else interesting. Something is happening near Jupiter. Mars has settled into an orbit around it, and some object is rotating there. It's Vesta. Look, Vesta is in Jupiter's orbit. And Earth was approaching, but Jupiter is the most massive star in the system with 1.2 solar masses, so it can pull everything in, of course. And where is the Sun? The Sun is moving over here. Nothing is happening to it. I'll speed up time again. Whoa, the simulator stopped time again, which means a collision happened somewhere. I'm looking for it. Here it is, I found it. I take it this is a fragment from Jupiter. It got hit again, although its mass is 190 solar masses. Wow. And Earth, as we can see, has a mass of 2.14 Jupiter masses. So in solar masses, that's very little. Earth will turn into a rocky object after it cools down. I'll speed up time now. Oh, look how it's wobbling. It hit poor Earth. And with time accelerated, yes, of course, this thing will cool down. But we'll have to wait a long time for it to cool. I think we'll miss something interesting while we sit here. As you can see, Earth is rapidly flying out of the solar system. What interesting things will happen next? Well, the Sun is approaching Neptune. They've parted peacefully for now. If I zoom out, I can see that Mars is already leaving this solar system. And a little earlier, Mercury also flew away. There's Mercury. And way over there, Earth has flown away. Okay, I see two stars here, orbiting closely around each other. Here, Uranus and Saturn are orbiting each other. It seems the situation here is stable for now. So what's left here at this point? Well, 
basically not much is left at all. Most likely Saturn and Uranus will have some interesting interactions with each other. And that's really about it for now. Oh my, just look at that. Saturn and Uranus are moving in a rather funny and unusual way of course. The Sun and Neptune. Oh, look how Neptune has settled in. Neptune is now orbiting with Saturn and Uranus has been thrown off. In short, this is crazy. I'm waiting for an interesting moment. Maybe there will be a supernova explosion. Well, we'll see. Anyway, so I think that's it for this system. In the end, Saturn and Neptune are flying off in one direction and the Sun and Uranus are flying in another. And the remaining objects in the system, the dwarf planets and asteroids, are also simply flying off to different corners of the universe. Some of these asteroids may have settled into the orbit of some star. Well, in general, that's the picture with this simulation. And now for the second part of this experiment. In this situation even the dwarf planets will become stars and it will be even more interesting. And Jupiter and Saturn will be subgeants. This time I made the rocky planets into yellow dwarfs and here you see Mercury. Mercury's mass is 0.8 solar masses. Venus's mass is 1.10 solar masses. Earth's mass is 1.20 solar masses. And in the background we see the subgeant Jupiter. In general, if we spin around Earth like this, we can also see the second subgeant Saturn. From this side you can see Venus. Here we have Uranus, it's quite interesting. You'll see later. Here's Mercury, here's the Sun, Ceres, and here's Sedna. Sedna is also a star by the way. And Mars has a mass of 0.9 solar masses. Now you see Ceres, the dwarf planet. I turned it into a red dwarf. Its mass is 0.9. 11 solar masses. Now you see Jupiter. I want to show you the process of turning Jupiter into a star. And one interesting point, this point by the way is related to its rotation period, a little less than 10 hours. My Jupiter will be a subgeant, so its mass will be somewhere around 3 solar masses. To start I'll set it to 1 solar mass. It has dimmed, you can't see anything at all. And now I'll make it 3 solar masses. Now I'll lock the ability for the mass to change and make the radius as much as 15 solar radii. Oi oi oi. And now look what's happening to Jupiter. Whoa, it just got torn to shreds. That was intense. But its fast rotation on its axis is to blame for this, a little less than 10 hours. And so for such a large star this is a very fast rotation. So to begin with we need to give it a normal day. I'll even make a day on Jupiter 100 days long. See how it's changing. And now to start I'll set it to one solar mass. It's better not to set three masses at once or it might turn into a black hole. I've had that happen more than once. Now we can set it to three solar masses. Now lock the ability for the mass to change. And I'll set it to 15 solar radii. The subgiant is ready. Now we just have to wait for it to heat up. I'm starting the simulation and you can see the process of it heating up. The temperature is rising. So essentially this is the kind of subgeant you get. Its final temperature is 1217 degrees Celsius. I created Saturn using the same method and its mass is 2.7 solar masses and it is also a subgiant. But Uranus turned out to be very unusual. I just wanted to make it a white star, like Neptune, but it turned out even more interesting. Its mass is 1.9 solar masses, but look at its temperature, 39,323 degrees Celsius, and a very high density, which most likely caused this temperature. It's like a wolf rayet star or a neutron star. But for a neutron star, a radius of 2.32 Earth radii is probably too much. Write in the comments. The same thing will happen with Neptune. I want to show you this whole process. So here's Neptune. First, I'm setting the mass to one solar mass. And now I'm doubling this value. Here, its mass will be exactly two solar masses. And now I'm speeding up time and we're watching it ignite. There. And the ignition will go very far. It's already almost 4000 degrees, 5000 degrees, and it keeps growing and growing. I'll speed it up more. And this is how Neptune transforms. It just turns blue. The temperature is already 40,000 degrees and in the end the temperature settled at 40,704 degrees Celsius. Incredible. If we look at the habitable zones of these stars, here's Uranus, here's Neptune. That's their habitable zone. It's not that big despite the huge temperature. But Saturn and Jupiter have a pretty large habitable zone. Well, this is a mix of habitable zones. There are many stars inside the system. And I turned the dwarf planets here into red dwarf stars and their habitable zone is so tiny that you can't even see it from here. Here's the red dwarf Pluto. Its mass is 0.28 of the sun's mass. Haumea has a mass of 0.21 of the sun's mass. Here's Eris. It's the most massive of the dwarf planets here and has a mass of 0.3 of the sun's the sun's mass. And I also decided to turn Sedna into a star and gave it a mass of 0.08 of the sun's mass. I'm turning on pause on collision again. And so I'm starting the simulation. Let's see what happens here. Well, I think it will be more interesting because there are more stars now. Whoa, and right away something is happening again. Here we have the sun. As you can see, it's been squeezed a little from the poles, stretched out. And there's some kind of fragment. A fragment of what is unclear. I didn't have time to see what collided there. A fragment with a mass of 2975 solar masses. What? What 
What is that? And it cooled down. And it's a rock. A rock with such a mass. The simulator simply didn't know what to do with it and made it a rock. Wow. And the sun just flew somewhere below the ecliptic plane and is, in short, flying out of the solar system, having lost a bit of its mass. I'm looking, but I don't see Earth. Most likely Earth hit the sun and that's what happened. Okay, I see something interesting happening near Jupiter. Whoa, look at that Jupiter. Holy cow. Wow, look how it's stretched out. A pancake, holy cow, not Jupiter. Wow, that looks absolutely epic, I definitely agree. And Venus is right there. So, I guess Venus must have hit it right here and really messed it up, so to speak, you know. I wonder what is about to take place next. And oi oi oi. That's Venus crashing into Jupiter. So the simulator stopped everything at this very moment. I set it to one minute per second, starting the time. Whoa, Jupiter heated up. Well, that's understandable. I'll speed up time. And what? Venus destroyed Jupiter. Wow. Well, Jupiter was a subgeant, not very dense, because it's a subgeant. And Venus is much denser, and like, it destroyed it. Well, as you can see, all that's left of Jupiter is just a large cloud of gas. I see the sun is flying straight towards Neptune. Maybe something interesting will happen there. Although we saw that the sun was below the ecliptic plane, so they'll just pass each other. Yeah. Mercury, as we can see, is flying flying away. And Venus, the one that defeated Jupiter, is also flying away. Saturn is moving in this direction, but there are no stars in its path. Mars will also kind of pass by. And what about our dwarf planets at the edge of the solar system? As you can see, they barely got any closer at all. Well anyway, I'm speeding up time. No collisions yet. This is how it's all happening. And Pluto is being ejected. And here, of course, it's complete chaos and pandemonium. The dwarf planets rushed into the system. The sun is gone now. I guess Saturn is trying to take charge of the solar system. It's having a hard time with it so far. But for now it's holding Neptune and Uranus in their orbits and a few dwarf planet stars. Well, that's what I'll call them. Red dwarfs, basically. Well, there are no supernovas, unfortunately. If we zoom out, we can see that many objects have flown away. Well, I guess everything has settled down now. We have a triple star system where Uranus orbits the farthest away from them. Here, as you can see, Neptune and Saturn are orbiting and their orbit is stable. And there are no other objects in orbit around them at all. I've restarted this simulation and I want to repeat this experiment. But this time, time will pass at one month per second and without pausing for collisions. Anyway, I'm starting the simulation. I hope there will be a supernova somewhere this time. I want to show you something epic in the end. I'll speed up time some more. Yeah, you can see it's processing. Okay, something happened there, Venus was ejected and a supernova. Voila, something exploded somewhere over there and we got a supernova. Let me check. Uranus and Neptune are there, Saturn is there, I don't see Jupiter. Apparently, Jupiter blew up. Besides Jupiter, I'm looking, and the Sun, Mercury, Venus, and Earth are also gone. Were four stars really destroyed at once? Epic, right? I'm letting time run. Maybe there will be another supernova explosion, but the nebula is dimming. Apparently there won't be any more. A lot of objects have flown away. Oh, by the way, Venus is here. Venus was not destroyed. Speeding up time more and more. Somehow the simulator processes everything in spurts. Well, apparently to be as accurate as possible. Well, we won't see any more supernovas, unfortunately. This is what this experiment led to. If the video was interesting, please support it with a like and write a comment. Thank you very much.